Hmm. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Hmm. We're almost there. We're almost there, brethren. Tried to do this video yesterday. Sat here and um, spake unto you. We went through scripture. Well, we, we never went, got uploaded. Um, but something happened. With it, and uh, as come, this has happened before, um, where there was something with the video that was done that the Lord didn't approve of, that there was something wrong in it. And yesterday, uh, after the fia fiasco, what had happened was, did the video go to upload it? And right away, I should have noticed because usually when uh, a video is uploaded, regardless, it usually says. An hour in uploading. And the video that was done originally yesterday was two and a half hours. And what was unusual was that it said it was going to take only 19 minutes to upload. I'm like, really? Paid no attention to it. And then it went to the um, processing. Then it went to that processing abandoned. And um, didn't say anything about being too long or anything like that. But... Um, it's like, really? So I tried it again, same thing happened. Uploaded and then processing, abandoned, something happened. And I'm like, oh, wow, really? And so I go and look on the file, the video, and wouldn't even play on the computer here. So I'm like, oh, great. So and then, that's happened before, and it could happen a million times. You know, I'll never get used to it. <laughs> but I see why now. I see why. Uh, the Lord had me to correct some things in it. And we got to also remember too, brethren, we're almost there. We're almost there. Almost there to what? We're almost there to being caught up. It is a lot closer today than it was yesterday. And in these times, especially, brethren, we have to be reminded of who is in control, who is in charge here. Before we begin this video, I want to read to you one verse out of John chapter 19, verse 11. And this is something that you and I as the Church of the Living God have to remember. Jesus answered, speaking unto Pilate, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. You got to remember what happened in the book of Job. That for those who belong to the Lord, Satan can have no power over you unless it has given him to do so. And there ain't no coincidences. Keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind. And on to you, please. Maybe there's a reason. Anyway, this video is intended for the Church of the Living God. Explicitly for the Church of the Living God. Okay? We're almost there, brethren. And as you and I have talked before in time past, uh, as you can see, <laughs> i got two sets of scriptures here. We have talked about the Psalms before you and I. And I'm going to uh, speak to you as though you are following me along in the scriptures, and I hope you do. But uh, you and I have talked uh, before about the Psalms, and I've mentioned on to you about life in the Psalms. What does that mean? First couple of Psalms that you read, it's indicative to someone who is a babe in Christ, um, just beginning their walk with the Lord. You get almost there to the end of the Psalms, Psalm 75, and then the last five Psalms in the Scriptures, the last five, all begin with, praise ye the Lord, 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 okay? It's, it's a portrait of our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for instruction in righteousness, of course, 
There are doctrines within um, the book of the Psalms, but primarily for instruction in righteousness. If you're not in the Psalms at least every day, at least reading one Psalm a day, you're, I mean, you're not reading scripture at all, but I mean, if you're not reading the scriptures, uh, the Psalms, you're really missing out. But today, you and I, we're going to concentrate on Psalm 75. We're almost there. Psalm 75 is the middle psalm. Obviously, 75 and 75, even I can figure that one out. That's 150, okay? And like I told you, like we've discussed before, the first, uh, first what, five or six psalms are indicative unto someone who is just beginning their walk with the Lord. You know, you get saved, uh, born again, converted, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, Spend your time in the scriptures in the New Testament, especially in the Pauline epistles. That's doctrine for us today in this dispensation. But don't neglect the Old Testament. Be in the Psalms, especially. You know, today is the 11th. Did you read the proverb for today? But also, don't, don't, don't neglect the Psalms. Don't neglect the Psalms. It's rich in instruction and righteousness for us. Comfort, edification, rebuke. And when you get to the 75th Psalm, which is what we are going to be looking at today, we are going to have an expository video here on Psalm 75. We're almost there. This is the midway mark towards the end of the book of Psalms. We're almost there. We're almost there to the catching away. We're almost there. When is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. I personally do not believe we will be here for 10 years left, uh, but uh, we do not know. But we're almost there, brethren. And with that, we're going to, like I said, have an expository um, look here at Psalm 75. Okay, we're going to, every single verse, every 10 verses here, <laughs> we're going to go over. So please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. I expect you to. And I'm going to speak to you as though you are, okay? This ain't milk. This is in-depth in meat. And this is for the church of the living God. I'm going to address you as though you are following me along. You got it? Okay. Let us begin. Like I said, I tried to do this yesterday. The Lord wasn't happy with it. And he corrected some things in it. Here we go. Psalm 75, beginning at the very first verse. And notice, this is the middle psalm. Middle of the way. Almost there. Almost there. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto we, unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Would have helped if I went there before we read, right? Psalm 92. Verses 1 under verse 5. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To shew forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, ten. On an instrument, upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery and upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of of thy hands. The works of thy hands, huh? What are those works of his hands, huh? <laughs> o Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. He created the heaven and the earth and all things that are therein. He created you. He created me. He did the work of salvation for us in dying for our sins, being buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for you. The work of the Lord has been done. The only thing is that 
remember, and this is for the Church of the Living God, but lost people are going to watch this too. You have to come to him on his terms, remember. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name, and may he save you. Okay? But now go to uh, Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Uh, we're going to read this whole psalm now. Okay? O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. He is a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. Beg your pardon, brethren. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. And looking at Psalm 75, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near. Thy wondrous works declare. Verse 6 in Psalm 95. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me. And saw my work. Oh. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation. And said it is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Very stern warning. An admonition to go and to give thanks and to praise the Lord. For his wonderful works. What does it say here? For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Thy name is near. Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, he is the creator. He created everything. Okay? Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ created everything. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Hopefully we can finish this psalm before the time is up. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious. And his righteousness, his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath shewed his people the power of his works. Today for us, the death, burial, and resurrection of shed blood on the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He has shewed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. <laughs> All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. That's why when you come across a Christian, you know, in one of these buildings with the reverend so-and-so, that's blasphemy. That is blasphemy. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding, departing from evil, have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. 
not X. John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, speaking, of course, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Remember that. He is the vine. We are the branches. We need to remember that. Who's in control? Okay? Ain't nothing happening by a coincidence. <laughs> the enemy can have no power over us at all unless it was given to them from above. Okay? I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Nothing of, nothing that will abide, nothing that lasts, nothing that is of eternal consequence, nothing that is of eternal fruit. No, no. We can do a lot of things by manipulating circumstances or people or emotions, can't we? But anything lasting, anything that glorifies the Lord. And note how it says, abide in me and I in you, in verse 4, Okay. And verse 5, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. You know, there is that hymn that says, he walks with me and talks with me a long life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You know, you know that hymn? Um, he walks with us or are we supposed to walk with him? See, as we all know, we're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. We have Christ living within us, that seal until the day of redemption, that circumcision made without hands. He's here with us. He's here living within us of the church of the living God. So he's with us. Are we with him? Are we walking with him? Huh? Huh? John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now some people get messed up about this verse, because it's like, we'll do greater things. And unfortunately, the Pentecostal charismatics who you know, name it and claim it, blab it and nab it or whatever it's called. Those guys are basically utilizing the teachings of Mary Baker Eddy, metaphysical mind science and that blasphemy, the religion of Joel Osteen called the secret, you know, the law of attraction and stuff like that. So these uh, people, the Pentecostals, charismatics, Catholics, uh, teach people that when it comes to this verse that uh, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. They take that to, they try to teach people to say, well then, that means you can make things appear miraculously out of thin air. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, uh, made fish and bread appear out of nothing, basically, to feed 5,000 people. No, 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 no. See, Jesus Christ is God, the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? He is come in the flesh, okay? He raised the dead. He is God. He could he can command the uh, the storms and whatnot. He there was not anything that he could not do. The only thing he didn't do was sin, okay? Jesus Christ never sinned. So when you got someone coming to this saying, uh, well, you you're going to do greater things. See what they're intuiting onto people is that. You are a little God. It's, it's the underlying little God's doctrine of the Pentecostal charismatics. Beware of it. And what is he talking about? Uh, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father in the flesh, was only how long? Three years? How many people are touched by uh, those who are in ministry today? legitimate ministry, ones that you and I don't know of. See, we immediately think of what we know, but who knows who the Lord has out there uh, doing works for him uh, left and right? 
his, his ministry, his public ministry was three years. So when he says, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. Okay. This is also intuiting because the, pi the price for sin has been paid. Okay. He will be dwelling in us. Okay. Hence, his ministry was only of three years. Okay. And what a ministry it was, huh? What a ministry it was. How long was Paul in ministry? Hmm? A little bit longer than three years. Uh, most of the apostles, their, their ministry was a little bit longer than three years, okay? That's what he's talking about, okay? That's what he's talking about. Let's continue. Verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And see there again, verses 12 on to verse 14, these charismatic Pentecostals, like the hell evangelist, sell evangelist guys on TV, the name it and claim it, blab it and nab it type guys. They say like, see, you got to believe, uh, believe and receive, okay? If you can believe it, you can achieve it, you know? That's what the Joel Osteen uh, religion is, the secret, okay? Uh, that's what they're telling people. That's what they're teaching people. So according to them, Okay, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So, Lord, please give me money so I can get a PlayStation Four. Lord, please give me what I need so I can get a good car. Lord, please give me a fancy house. Lord, please give me a wife or a husband. Hmm. Hmm. Ye ask, but ye ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. Hmm. And remember, brethren, what it says in First John. Hold your place here. Uh, go to First John chapter five. Remember what it says in First John chapter five. Do not forget what it says in First John chapter five. First John, chapter five. 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, we who are of the church of the living God, born again, saved, converted, New creatures in Christ Jesus, we know that we are saved. Catholicism teaches, of course, as you know, um, it's the sin of presumption to presume that you're saved. There is no guarantee of salvation within Catholicism. Catholicism is Satan's church, okay, run by the Jesuit order. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us according to his will. Is it, God, is it God's will to give you money so you can get a PlayStation? Is it God's will to give you money so you can get a fancy schmancy car, a big house, to peruse around as a man whore, uh, trying to find a hot trophy wife or something? No. What is God's will? Why don't you search the scriptures daily and find out? Okay? See what these charismatic Pentecostals like to do, the guys on the television, okay, and the women woo on the television like to do, they come to verses 12 on to verse 14 and try to twist that to um, touch your covetousness, to turn this into lasciviousness, okay, to turn it into greed, to puff up covetousness, like God is a genie in a bottle. Yeah, be aware of that. And verse 15, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And remember, brethren, it's according to his will he will hear us. The things that the Lord gives on to you and I is meant to be shared with others, not hoarded for yourselves. Okay? The, whatever spiritual gifts the Lord has given you, you are to share that with the body of Christ, the church of the living God. 
that you are to use that for his glory. He is to use that for his own glory in you, I should say. Okay? But what the Lord gives you, you are supposed to work out. What he gives you, you are to share with other people. To edify, to rebuke, encourage, strengthen the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Okay? Don't forget that. See, charismatic Pentecostals take verses 12 on to verse 14 and turn it into I, 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 me, me, me. When the Lord's will is to be giving and sharing with others. Okay? Don't forget that. Let's continue in in John chapter 14, uh, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, capital C, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, that seal until the day of redemption, okay, circumcision made without hands. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right there, verse 18, the Lord's telling you, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, that it's him. I will come to you. Jesus Christ is the Father, okay? One God, spirit, soul, and body, okay? One God only, not three divine persons that make one God, okay? No, no, no. And, you know, unto thee, O God, uh, Psalm 75, verse 1, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Uh, just very quickly, one verse here. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, let's read verses 10 under verse 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you hold. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. There's only one name. What does that say? There is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is our Savior. Only one name. You know, uh, where he says, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There's only one name. There's only one God, Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We are to praise our Lord and worship Him for the work that He has done for us and in us as Creator. But also for those of us of the Church of the Living God, the work that He did at the cross for us. For us. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 on to verse 11. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man, for scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, Church of the Living God, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the power of, uh, of Jesus Christ, who lives within me, okay, uh, I beg your pardon. That was a gross Bradization of Scripture. I beg your pardon. Uh, go there. Uh, Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. Yes. 
For if when we were, back in Romans chapter 5, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. I am crucified with Christ, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. In verse 11, here in Romans chapter 5, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we, those who are saved, have now received the atonement. Psalm 75, verse 1. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. Verse 2. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. When I will receive the congregation. Proverbs, chapter 31. See, we're almost there, brethren. When you get to Psalm 75, you're halfway there. You're almost there. Almost there. Okay? You're almost there. See, as a babe in Christ, the Lord can use a babe in Christ to do wondrous things. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you got to learn how to crawl before you can walk. You have to go through experiences. You have to have your senses exercised, okay? The Lord can use a babe to do anything. He can use any of his body to do anything, yes. But see, after your senses are exercised, after you have been through some things, after you have been have arrows shot at you by the enemy, you get a little seasoning upon you, okay? You, you get a little um, experience, okay? You get to go through some things. So when it says, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Right away, you're thinking of what? A preacher or a pastor or a teacher or something. Mm -hmm. Has not the Lord orchestrated moments for you? If he hasn't, maybe you need to really consider why not. But has not the Lord put people, brought people to you? As for us, brought people into your lives, put you in situations where he could use you as his vessel? He does that for babes, too. But hath not the Lord brought people onto you? Proverbs 31, verses 1 on to verse 9. <laughs> Most people, when they come to Proverbs 31, they concentrate for you uh, sisters out there from verses 10 on to verse 31. And amen, amen. This is a godly woman. Absolutely. This is the type of godly woman to give yourself as an example onto. This is what you, you know, strive to be as a godly woman, a woman in Christ, a sister in Christ. Amen. Amen. This is good. Instruction and in righteousness for a woman in Christ. Yes. But remember, and you sisters out there, well, you women, ladies, who is the head of the woman? And who is the head of man? Hey, you might have a problem with what I just said. You take that up with the Lord, okay? Man is the head of the woman. Man is the head of the wife, okay? It's God, man, woman, children. Not God, woman, children, pets, man, okay? But Proverbs 31 starts out with the admonition onto the man first. Let's read. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, what my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. Interesting that his mother is the one telling him this. Hmm. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Think of King Solomon. King Solomon, who was really blessed by the Lord, given so much stuff. What happened to him? Um, King Solomon, you read Ecclesiastes, okay? King Solomon had anything he want, wanted right at his fingertips. He could take anything. He had a thousand wives. What was it? Uh, 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 what was it? 700 wives and 300 concubines or vice versa? He had a thousand women at his disposal. Which he was warned not to do in scripture. But he did it anyway. Okay? King Solomon had everything he wanted at his fingertips. 
And because of that, and because his wives turned away his heart from following God, um, it led to his downfall. Give not thy strength unto women, like King Solomon did, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. And for all his wives he built pagan idols, abominations. Okay, let's continue. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Why? Lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. In drinking, you get confused, be able to take a bribe, you don't have a right head, that kind of thing. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Verses 8 and 9, the centerpiece here. Open thy mouth for the dumb, dumb who cannot speak, in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. These lost people, brethren, they're appointed to destruction unless they come to the Lord on his terms. And that's not Calvinism, okay? That's not that these people are going to go to heaven without their say-so. These people are going to go to hell without their say-so. No, no, no. They're snared. They're taken by the devil at his will. They're snared in his trap. They're, they're What does it say here? Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Okay, unless the lost hear the true gospel and come to the Lord on his terms, they're going to destruction. The lost are appointed to destruction unless they come unto the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms. And that's not Calvinism either, okay? That's not Calvinism. As you and I know, what was our destination before the Lord saved us? Our destination was hell because we were taken in that snare by, of the devil. But then the Lord orchestrated something in your life and my life, and he has saved us. See? Verse 9. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Okay. Acts chapter 20. We're going to be in uh, Acts 20 uh, a couple times here. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 on to verse 32. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 on to verse 32. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the Christians, <coughs> to feed the church of God. Sorry. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. What happens? What happens? You start preaching truth. You're going to see what kind of metal these people are made out of. Where their hearts really are. Hmm? And there are some out there It's like, well, he's not saying that things I want to hear. Well, I, I can do this. All he does is sit there and turn on a computer. <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. And also the devils who are on YouTube and other uh, platforms that want to attack those of the church of the living God to draw people away from the truth and draw people after them. If it's after that they're going after them and following them is insignificant unto them. What they want to accomplish is to get people away from the truth. See. Also of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I commend you to God. Ran into this one wicked uh, woman on the square one time when we were talking 
um, told her, you know, what the Lord has called me to do and whatnot. And she's like, well, where do you, uh, where do you lead these people? And of course she was asking me that because she was like, you're supposed to lead them to a church building. And it's like, and I did. It's like, uh, I lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. And she's like, yeah, yeah, well, but they need to be directed. They need this. They need to go to a church building. See, that's the mentality of Christians. See, God is their building. And God is not in a building made with hands. You're saved, born again, converted. Your body, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost because God dwells within you, see. Yeah. Yeah. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, not to man. Remember David? After he numbered the children of Israel, God gave him three things. <laughs> Choose one of them. Famine, running from your enemies, or pestilence. And what did David do? He did the right thing. He did the wise thing. It's like, oh, Lord, I'm in a great strait betwixt. I don't know what to do. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But let me not fall into the hand of man. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I commend you to God. Like that wicked devil woman that I encountered that one day, who was at the what, what uh, Zion Church or something like that. You know, why are you sending them? You wicked little woman. I didn't say that, of course. I should have, though. But it's like, I, it's like yeah, you want, you're supposed to give them, turn them to a church building, you wicked little woman, you. Wicked. Wicked. Absolutely wicked. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. Now you might be saying, well, Brad, this is just all for those who are in a position, uh, like say yourself or something. No. Remember, brethren, do remember, please, that we are all... In the ministry of reconciliation, we all have the word of reconciliation. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay? We all have the word of reconciliation. We are all in the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ, remember? Okay? And us walking our talk, walking in accordance to the scriptures, when there is not opportunity to speak it verbally, by the way we adhere our lives unto the scriptures. And that, dear brethren, sisters, is for anyone. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. I will judge uprightly. Okay? When I will receive the congregation. When the Lord puts you into circumstances out there in the world. Okay? When people will come to you. And they will. They have, haven't they? Okay? They have, haven't they? Okay. Just because just because you ain't doing this, just because you ain't doing this, that, or the other thing, God has put you in his body where he wants you, and he wants you to do what he has called you to do wherever it is he has placed you. Okay? Okay? Now, 1 Timothy, not 2 Timothy, you idiot. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? Now, here's a little admonition here. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. See, bishop, someone who is in the authority of a bishop, is not supposed to be a woman. Okay? You see here on YouTube and on other platforms, these women teachers, these women preachers, uh, scripture is against what you're doing. You're not supposed to exert authority upon men. You might have a problem with that. Your problem ain't with me. Your problem is with the Lord and his word. Okay? But women 
can, because remember, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. And what does it say in the scripture? That uh, women, as far as uh, with their husbands and whatnot, uh, wives with their husbands, that they might be won by the chaste conversation of the wives. And for you, a sister in Christ who has no husband, by the way you live in accordance to Scripture. If there's someone who, um, someone who uh, you look to as a woman, a sister in Christ, you can help that person uh, with information and stuff like that. Amen, amen. But you got to remember, women are not supposed to be in roles of authority teaching. Okay? Just, that's not me. That's the Lord. Okay? That's what the Scriptures say. Okay? What's that, um, what's that woman who wrote the New Age Bible versions? I forget her. Uh, Ripplinger. Gail Ripplinger. Her work was pretty good. Was she violating 1 Timothy chapter 3? Yeah. Let's continue. One that, verse 4, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Some people will say, oh, see, to be a deacon, you got to have kids. Okay? Then what about Paul? What about Paul? You're not a true deacon unless you have kids. I can't have kids. I wish I could. I can't. But what about Paul? Oh, he's just the exception, right? No. If children are... Because remember, children are the, the fruit of the womb, are the reward of the Lord, okay? Children are a blessing. Children are a reward, okay? And if the Lord has deprived you for whatever reasons of children, but yet he has put you into a position, go away. Go away. It's if you have children. Okay, let's continue. Verse 5, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Also, verse 5 is talking about not letting his woman, his wife, rule over him. Kind of like what uh, Jezebel did to Ahab. Yeah, let's continue. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. What is the snare of the devil? Uh, verse 6, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride. That is the condemnation of the devil. Pride. Pride. Okay? All right. Verse 8. Yes, wait. Moreover, he, we read verse 7, beg your pardon, verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre and money, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Also let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so, must their wives... Oh, look at that now. Look at that. Look at that now. A bishop and a deacon. Oh, they're supposed to be men. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children, and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good decree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. And you got to remember, like we've already looked at, nobody takes this honor upon themselves. You know, there are those out there, well, he's just sitting there reading scripture. I can do that. Anybody can do that. Uh, yeah, everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit even said, this is easy. Anybody can do this. Oh, yeah, you're right, you, you wicked devil. Yeah. But see, in order to be doing what the Lord wants you to do, this takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Prayer, fasting, 
for the Lord to reveal these kinds of things unto you, to give you things to speak, okay? Because remember, you're going to give an account for everything that you teach. So yeah, anybody can press a button, sit there and say something. Not everybody is led or guided by the Lord to do these things. And like it says in the book of Hebrews, no man taketh this honor upon himself, but those who are appointed as Aaron was. Okay? You do not come to, like, say this position just because you feel like it. God forbid. No. No. Remember, who's in control? Uh, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks? Unto thee do we give thanks? For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Who's in control here? When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five. We're gonna gonna you know whoop this dead horse a little bit. First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five. I keep. Yeah. First Peter chapter five verses one on to verse four. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy, filthy lucre, money, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, a Nicolaitan, or setting yourself up to be a pope, but being in samples to the flock. Now look at verses 2 and 3 there. If you are doing things as being lords over God's heritage, you know, setting yourself self up to be a pope, what, what kind of example, I love that word, <laughs> what kind of example are you setting to people? Setting yourself up to be a pope. To be the great one, you know. You look on, you know, as some of these Christians. You look at these guys like John MacArthur. Oh, 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 wow, wow. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And if you are setting yourself up as some great one as a pope, you know, a diatrophies, what kind of examples are you setting to the flock? Look at the example of what the late Peter Ruckman left behind unto those who are carrying on his name. And I rest my case. You think the Ruckmanites of today are anything? Huh? You think they are representing God? The modern Ruckman, Ruckmanites who are bloodthirsty leeches and savages? I don't think so, man. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. See, we are to serve one another. What the Lord has given you is meant to be given unto others, not to be hoarded, not to be just, you know, locked down and kept tight just for yourself. No, what the Lord gives you is meant to be shared. It's meant to be shared, brethren. It's meant to be shared. Psalm 75. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Verse 3. The earth and the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. <laughs> um, verse 3 is a very favorite verse of the flat earthers. Very favorite uh, verse. Um, you know, uh, that's, not, that's not what it's talking about. Okay? It's not what it's talking about. See, looking at verse 2, okay? You got to look at this in context. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Okay? And how do you receive the congregation? Uh, verse 1. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. We as the church of the living God, God will put us into situations. We'll bring people into our lives to be witnesses unto them. Okay? 
Okay? And look at the verse, verse 3. Okay? The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 30. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 30. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. Hmm. I bear up the pillars of it. Hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 30. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of of all the churches. And he's not talking about buildings. He's talking about individual groups of people. Okay? People, not buildings. Okay? Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. And what did I say to, to verse 32? Did I say that in the verse? No, verse 30, okay? Sorry about that. We read a little bit more. But see, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. And Paul had the care of all the churches. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. And look at verse uh, chapter 12, verse 15. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. So Paul had the care of all the churches, and he was weak, and he gloried in the things that concern his infirmities. Okay? And the more love that he shewed unto the brethren, and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. And Galatians chapter 4 Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, one verse, one verse, just one verse. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Hmm. 1 Timothy chapter 3, yeah, verses 14 on to verse 16. You see how we did that? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 16 now. These things write I on to you. Uh, these things write I on to thee, excuse me, hoping to come on to thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Look at Psalm 75 now, okay? Verse 2 and 3. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Okay? And in verse 1. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works. Declare instruction and righteousness. The Lord saves you. He dwells within you, seals you. You have that circumcision made without hands. He grows you, nourishes you, builds you up in a walk with him, a continual walk. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. How do you judge uprightly? The scriptures. How do you judge yourself? The scriptures. How do you judge? The scriptures. So, when you're judging through the scriptures and speaking truth, remember prophesying for today. It's not like the charismatic Pentecostals tell you that their prophecies are ones that come outside of scripture with new revelation. There are no new revelations. The canon of scripture is complete. We have God's word right here in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, so those who prophesy today are those who, number one, are saved, born again, converted, have the Lord within them, you know, comparing, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, okay? Stay with me here, okay? Someone who is prophesying today has, number one, the Lord living within them. Number two, has the scriptures. And the Lord, through that vessel, is speaking to you through the scriptures. That is prophesying today in this dispensation. There is no new revelation 
outside of Scripture. Do you see? That is prophesying today. So when we as the church of the living God, when I shall receive the congregation and judge uprightly, I will judge uprightly, God saves us, uh, seals us, the circumcision made without hands. He leads you on to the authorized version of the scriptures. He living in you will speak unto others through you, through the word, prophesying. And when you start living according to the scriptures, when you start speaking to the uh, truth, of the scriptures unto other people, brethren, what happens? The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. What is man made out of? Of the dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Man is of the earth. We were made of dirt. Okay? And you gotta remember the wisdom that the wisdom, this wisdom, the, you know, the wisdom of the devil is first what? earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay, you read about that in James. The wisdom that comes of this world, the wisdom of the devil is at first what? Earthly. Because remember, Satan doesn't savor the things that be of God, but the things that be of man, man who is made from the earth. So the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of the devil is first earthly, sensual, led by your senses, devilish. The earth, and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. You, spar you start speaking truth, you're going to see who's who. I bear up the pillars of it. Is not, what does verse 15 here say? But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So, what is verse 3 talking about for our instruction and in righteousness? Of course. The earth and the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Our instruction and in righteousness. You and I, we are of the church of the living God. The pillar and ground of the truth. We're judging uprightly because why? For thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. You start speaking truth from the scripture unto these Christians. What happens? You want to know what happens? Let's see what happens. What happens? You start speaking truth to these Christians. You start speaking the truth about the, the, um, who God truly is, that there is going to be coming um, a redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble. You start speaking truth unto these Christians. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved, earthly, sensual, devilish. I bear up the pillars of it. What happens when we start speaking truth, brethren? Oh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, church of the living God, have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. You, brother, sister, you start living, speaking truth to the lost world. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. But I bear up the pillars of it. You're of the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Why? And when I shall receive the congregation, I shall judge uprightly. And in verse 1, for that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. You get it? Huh? Huh? Brethren. Verse 3 is not a very good verse for the flat earth. And incidentally, hey, you leave that alone. I brought that up for example only. Leave the shape of the earth argument out. Okay? We have bigger fish to fry. Shh. Do not mention it. If you mention it in the comments, it will not be there. Okay? We've got bigger things to worry about. I use that as an example. Okay, so hush. Okay, we got bigger things to the we got bigger things to concentrate on. Okay, so just just letting you know. Okay, so the earth and the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. Verse four. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn. I see. See here again. We're almost there, brethren. This is the middle psalm, halfway through. Okay? We're almost there. Verse 1 talks about 
for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. For our instruction in righteousness, you're saved, born again, converted, other church of the living God. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. When the Lord deems you fit, whenever that may be, whenever he sees fit that you are not a babe. I've known people who have been of the church of the living God who've been saved for up to eight to nine years and are still as a they're still a babe. Okay? Then again, I've met Christians who said they've been saved for 25 years and they don't even know what a babe of the church of the living God knows. Why? Because they're Christians that go to church buildings. Okay? But, okay, whenever the Lord deems you ready, what is the longevity of a babe? That's up to the Lord. Okay? Obviously, if you've only been saved for a month or so, yeah, you're still a babe. Can someone be not a babe after a year? That's up to the Lord. It's when the Lord deems you fit. It's when the Lord thinks that you have reached a point where you are in him or whatever. Being a babe denotes what? Not knowing how to walk. You got to learn how to crawl for first. Once you learn, go through some things, then you'll start walking, see? It's a growth process. And so... Verse 2, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. When the Lord starts opening things up to you in your walk, the earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah, okay? You start speaking truth, you're going to see who's who. Verse 4, I said unto the foolish. Now, this is the result of us doing uh, from verses 1 on to verse 3. This is what becomes of us. I said unto the fools, the fools who say in their heart there is no God, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up the horn. Jude. Jude 20. Ah, Jude chapter 1. Jude doesn't have chapters, does it? Jude 20, on the verse 25. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God. If you love me, keep my commandments. And today, of course, we are saved, born again, converted, sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. You cannot lose what is not yours to lose. Okay? It's the Lord's salvation, not yours. Okay? Um, you could be of the church of the living God and just live uh, like a devil, but see, your time ain't going to last that long because the Lord's going to kill you eventually. There's no way of getting around that, okay? But if you love him, keep his commandments. And that's not to be saved or to stay saved. If you love the Lord, you're going to want to do what pleases him. You're going to want to live according to the way he wants you to live. Okay? And we've already looked at that. If you love me, keep my commandments. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If you love him, keep his commandments. Um, if you are in sin as the church of the living God, you know, what can separate us from his love? Nothing. Nothing. But how are you showing love to the one who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood for you if you're living in sin? Hmm? How are you showing him love? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. And others, save with fear, scare the hell out of them. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hating even the garment spotted by by the flesh? Oh, you mean flesh is sinful? Dirty? Corrupt? So a garment is actually better than sinful flesh? Is that what that's implying? Huh? And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Why is that? Because sin, sin has been condemned to what? The skin suit. Okay? which Catholics and these coadjutors worship. Okay. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, 
To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. And if some have compassion making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, not Corinthians bread. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 14. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which are which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. And I'm unfortunately guilty of that myself. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Amen. Amen. And... 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 16. Let no man despise thy youth. We've talked about this before. Why did Paul say this to Timothy? Because Timothy was brought up in the scriptures from a little baby. You know, a little regret. He was brought up in the scriptures. He was brought up in the ways of the Lord. So when Paul says, let no man despise thy youth, that is because Timothy was brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Okay, that's why he said that. Okay, there are some um, Jesuit provincials out there who would like to tell you young people uh, who will use this and tell you to go do things that you shouldn't be doing. Watch out for that. I myself made that mistake with someone who was not saved. And I regret that, that I did that. So, beware of that. Okay? Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word. Be thou an example of the believers. Be, but be thou an example of the believers. Walk your talk. In word. In conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And remember, charity is self-sacrifice. Till I come, give attention, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Brother, whoever you are, are you neglecting the gift that God has given you? We've already talked about this. The gifts that God has given you have, are there to be shared with others. Start sharing. And they're not talking about tangible, physical, this. It's, deep, it's deeper than that. Whatever the Lord has given you as the church of the living God, give on to others. Give it on to others. Exhort the brethren. Strengthen the church of the living God. Strengthen that which remains. Because the days are evil. And I know for certain there are a couple of you that might have been called to something and are neglecting are neglecting the gift that is in me. Chop, chop, come on. Let's continue. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself. How do you do that? Examine yourself. Prove your own selves, whether you be in the faith. Okay? Daily examination. I, I've talk, I, we've talked about this. Do you not examine yourself daily in scriptures? Why not? Were you afraid of something? 
or you you don't got much time. I'll blow it out your rear end with your excuses on that. Daily examination. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself. You're not working to save thyself. And them that hear thee. What does that mean? Uh, save yourself from embarrassing the Lord. See, it talks about how if we deny him, he'll deny us. Not salvation. See, we're once saved, always saved. The Lord save you. You cannot become unsaved because it's not your salvation. You're going to heaven, okay? Once saved, always saved. But see, if you deny the Lord out there, he can deny you protection. He can deny you a blessing. He can deny you many things. He won't deny your salvation because if he did, he would be a liar. And what, what, what are we talking about then? Right? See, you need to take heed to yourself. You need to walk your talk. You have a gift that the Lord has given you Share it. Share it, brethren. Okay, come on. Come on. We don't got that much time. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up the horn. Okay? First Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians chapter four, verses eighteen on to verse twenty one. Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know the speech of them which are puffed up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. But if I, but, sorry, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Oh, so many people can talk about good game, spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. They speak smooth words, deceiving the hearts of the simple. Okay, So many can speak a good game, put on that facade. Do they walk that talk? See, what you're looking at, this is what, what you see is what you get. Okay, What you see is what you get. How many of them out there you're only seeing a facade. You're seeing a performance. Because, what does it say here? But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Why? For the kingdom of God, and this is reference unto the spiritual, is not in word, but in power. Power. Oh, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee, do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Note the lowercase s there. Okay? And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, chapter 2, just one verse. Verse 5. That your faith should should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Oh, how many of these people that you see on YouTube are these big preachers who dazzle you with the wisdom of men? But see, we of the Church of the Living God, I commend you to God, the power of His grace. While these people on YouTube and on other platforms, you know, these these Christian preachers who have almost a half a million subscribers and stuff like that. <laughs> that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of, of men, but in the power of God. Oh, how many can talk a good game out there, brethren? Go to Acts chapter 20 again. See, I told you. Go to Acts chapter 20, verses 18. On to verse 27. You see how we did that? Acts chapter 20, verses 18, on to verse 27. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came to Asia, after, the, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. 
testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Greeks are Gentiles. We know this. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up the horn. Warn the wicked of their ways. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of those things move me, neither count I myself my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel, the good news of the grace of God. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Not that you save yourself by your belief. Not that you're a good person and worth dying for. Not that you got rid of X, Y, Z, and then you go to the Lord and he gives you ABC. No, no. And you know here in verse 22, about how he says, look at that, don't look at me. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Uh, he, he save, verse 23, save the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. The Lord clearly would have preferred Paul went another way. You could read that on your own time, obviously, and we've talked about that in what video, I don't remember. But Paul, his see, Paul's sin was pride. He was warned on three occasions. Three occasions. Hey, don't go to Jerusalem. He went anyway. Okay? Keep that in mind about Paul. That's And plus, keeping that in mind about Paul and keeping that in mind about ourselves, how frail and how, um, how sinful we actually are, save sinners, okay? How fallible we are. Ought to be a great source of comfort unto you. But I had to mention that. Verse 25. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Amen. Amen. Verse 5 in Psalm 75. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Oh, yeah. Now, now see, let's recap. We're saved. We have the Lord within us. His, uh, for thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Verse 1. When the Lord deems you ready, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. When the Lord puts you into situations, the earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. Okay. You start speaking truth, you're going to see who's who. Verse 4. How are you speaking? You are warning. I said unto the fools, who say in their heart uh, there is no God. Deal not foolishly, living as there is no God. And to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Verse 5. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Come on. Proverbs. Ecclesiastes. Did you read the proverb today? Why not? Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 19. Had to come to this. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Verses 16 on to verse 19 is referring to every single wicked, satanic, Catholic, devil, Jesuit coadjutor here on YouTube and on other platforms and all the evil devils that you're going to meet. These infiltrating devils is what that's talking about. 
these fakes. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 12 on to verse 17. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. See, you have the fear of the Lord, that makes you prudent. And because you have wisdom to fear the Lord and prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. See, to have the fear of the Lord, wisdom, which leads into prudence, which will lead into knowledge. See, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward or perverse mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Hmm. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. But you know where this begins? You know where it begins? Let's, let's see where it begins. See, how, how easy it is for some of us of the Church of the Living God, unfortunately, that you can deflect certain things and take it out on others and be so quick to point out in others while yet not dealing with yourself. Where does verse 13 begin? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. I hate the evil in the world. I hate arrogancy. But you know what? We, and we see here, what is evil? Pride and arrogancy. And the evil way, which is pride and arrogancy, and the froward mouth do I hate. And the froward mouth is spoken in pride and arrogancy and all that. But where does it begin? Where does this hatred begin? Job chapter 42. <laughs> verses 1 on verse 6, we have to. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Don't look at me. Look at that verse right there, boy. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, if judgment first begins at the house of God, you know how our Lord, how these, these devils like, don't judge me, don't judge me, you, you have to judge. You, you have to judge, okay? But see, they say, don't judge me as a defensive measure. Because like, don't judge me because of my sin. And they say, take out the moat out of your own eye. It begins with you. It begins with you. See, the Lord has delivered me from sodomy. I can preach to you and speak to you about against sodomy because the Lord delivered me from it. Delivered me from video games, drug addiction, so on and so forth. Pornography, okay? those deliverances that the Lord has wrought. And when you take the beam out of, of the moat out of your own eye, the, those things, you can be not a hypocrite and say, hey, you, you need to get away. Where you, don't judge me. Hey, I used to be in your shoes. But you know what the Lord did for me? You know what the Lord did? See, it begins with us. It begins with us. That's why we need to examine ourselves every day, brethren. Okay? Every single day. Okay? Every single day. Uh, Proverbs 26, the fool's proverb. It's not for a fool, but it's uh, addressing the fools. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Proverbs 26, verses 1 on to verse, I lost my place, 5. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse Causeless shall not come. That's science, by the way. Action. Reaction. 
<laughs> so the curse causeless shall not come. That's science. See, the scriptures are scientific. Okay, the curse causeless shall not come. If you are doing what's right in the eyes of the Lord according to the scriptures, He'll bring things, He'll allow things to come upon you for your trying of your patience. Uh, the trying of your faith worketh patience to refine you as purified silver and gold. You know, don't uh, be, don't fret about the fiery trial that is to try you. Okay, He'll let that happen, but. Usually, if you're walking right with the Lord. Okay, let's continue. A whip, I love this verse. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. You're a fool if you say in your heart there is no God. You're an atheist, you're a fool. What does the Lord compare you on to? A horse who needs a... And an ass. A whip for the horse, you know, ghost. A bridle for the ass. Also an ass. Arr. Have you ever met, done anything with asses before, donkeys? They are the most stubborn. And they're puppets. They're like, they'll stand there, those four-legged creatures. They'll stand there uh, uh, in their stubbornness and just stand there arrogantly, almost like, I'm not moving. I'm going to stand here. And if you get in my way, I'll kick you. Oh, that, that's painful. But yeah, asses are really stubborn and pompous. Okay? And a fool, you're compared unto beasts in the eyes of the Lord. That ought to scare those of you lost people who have made it this far. Okay? we got to remember that too about the fool, brethren. That the Lord calls them beasts. That does not mean we treat them as beasts. But we got to remember, because they're natural, unregenerate. Okay? You read the book of Jude, okay? Let's continue. And here is something, unfortunately, that I have failed at. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. See, the devils that attack me personally, um, they, they know, my enemies know, that they can irritate me. They know that I get irritated. And they also know that I will fight back. And that is their goal. They want to bring people down to their level. They want to get you angry so you fight back with them. Hence, they, in their little deluded mind, they're like, ha ha, see, I proved, I proved that you're no better than anybody else. See, you're just like us lost devils. Yeah, because see, we got to you, we got to you. <laughs> And I failed that. I failed at that, unfortunately. And remember, in these devils' deluded little brains, when you fight back with them, they are, it's the fulfillment right here. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. It's to them, it's a victory when they get you to fight back with them. Okay? It's a victory unto them. Okay? I got you to go down to my level of perversity to attack me back. That's what they do. That is their mentality. Remember, these, these devils, they're children. They're children of their father, Satan. But they, they have the mentality of schoolboys, okay? School children on a playground, okay? That's their mentality. Don't forget that, brother. Don't forget that. Okay. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 2 on to verse 5. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. Is that not happening today? That sacrificeth in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves, dead in trespasses and sins, and lodge in the monuments that the masons build, which eat swine's flesh 
and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Those who are outwardly religious, outwardly religious, but have no inner conversion. You know, they come up with a will worship, you know, will worship, that kind of thing. Yeah, outwardly religious, but not on the inside, they're full of dead, dead men's bones, which remain among the graves. Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Okay? And then 1 Corinthians chapter 5. A little bit more on this. We have to cover this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. <laughs> Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Mm. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as not so much as name, as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Yuck. Verse two, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Lift not your up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. We're Christians. We're not judging you. This is you come to the church building. This is when you're in a gross sin. I don't like that, but we're Christians. You you don't need judgment. You need love. That's exactly what was going on here. Stiff neck. Okay, stiff neck. Lifting up their horn on high. Look at how, like we just read in Isaiah 65, look at how righteous we are. Everybody come on to us. We're not going to judge you. But those of us who walk according to the scriptures, <laughs> they have a real big problem with us, don't they? Of course they do. Verse 3. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already. As though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You messing around with sin? How long you got before the Lord just has enough of you and kills you? Hmm? But see, these people were uh, lifting up their horns on high. They spoke with a stiff neck. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Come on, fingers, work with me. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Oops. Verses 1 on to verse 3. And Hannah prayed. And said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies. Because I rejoice in thy salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee, beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Psalm 75, verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's continue. Verses 4 on to verse 10. You see how we did that? The bows of the mighty are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. 
The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. There are no coincidences. Nothing ever just happens. Okay? He is in control. Okay? Promotion comes from him. You don't take this responsibility on upon yourself unless he appoints it to you. But that does not absolve you from sharing that gift that he has given unto you. Don't forget that. And I'm going to get on your rear end about that, especially with the times that we are facing. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. The pillars of the earth are Lord's. And uh, today in this dispensation, the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of the truth. Yeah. For the pillars of the earth are Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. The weight of the world is on our shoulders. We are the ambassadors of Christ to speak unto the world. Mm-hmm. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. If the Lord has said no, why are you trying to make it into a yes? The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 35 on to verse 42. I had to come here. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 35 on to verse 42. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. We're almost there, brethren. We're almost there. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See, science, falsely so called, is going to fail you. Lots of people, if you make it this far. Evolution, <laughs> Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehoism, Islam, it's all going to fail you. See now that I, even I am he, and Jesus said, unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And there is no God, little g, with me. Notice that. There is no God with me, little g. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I whet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment... I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Who's in control? Who's truly in control? And, and look at verse 6 there. What do you see? Don't look at me. Look at, this, look at the verse. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Where's north? 
Where is North? See, never eat soggy waffles. North, East, Southwest. North denotes what? Upwards. Upwards, right? You go up. What's up? Huh? The Lord? Really quickly on this, go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. You got, I want you to notice something, especially, we're going to read the, the context, but especially, especially in verse 13. Because look at that verse in verse 6 in Psalm 75. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Where is north? What's the significance of north? Let's look. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 and verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I'm a good person. I will ascend into heaven. Ascend, go north. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Notice the upward thrust. Ascend, going up. Stars, up there, okay? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Here it is. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds northward denoting upwards okay i will be like the most high we gotta read verse 15 yet thou shalt be brought down lift just puffed up yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit see note the upward thrust of what Lucifer is saying here, I have said, I will ascend. Okay, well, look at the verse. Uh, verse 13. I will ascend above the stars. Ascend above. Uh, verse 14. Ascend. Going upwards, northwards. And verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Remember, when the Lord asked of Satan, where whence comest thou? Walking to and fro. See that? But Psalm 48, Psalm 48, Psalm 48, verses 1 on to verse 3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Do you, do you get it? North is denoting where God is. Look at verse eight, uh, 7 now. But God, northward, the city of the great king, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. You see that? See how that plays in there? There's no north. But then in verse 7, it's talking about God as the judge. Meaning north, upwards. You get it? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We want verses 1 on to verse 9 now. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 on to verse 9. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Deuteronomy chapter 9, uh, 32, verses 1 on to verse 9. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb. And as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the capital R rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot 
is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Yeah, their spot can't be washed away. Our spot gets washed away by the blood of the crucified one. See. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Yeah, verse 8 talks about separation. The separation of the kindreds. Okay? Keeping kindred separate. That, that's scripture. Okay? It is Satan through his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, that wants to bring everybody together and build them towers that reach up to heaven. Okay? It's Catholicism that wants to bring everybody together. God wants, it's like, okay, you stay there, you stay there, you stay there, okay? That's good. That's what God wants. God is a God of separation. God is a God of distinction. They ain't not, that, that, that's, that's scripture, pal, okay? If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with the Lord, okay? God is a God of diversity. God is a God of distinction. God likes these people over there, that over there, those over there, them over there, okay? It is Satan that wants to bring everybody together so that the world may be ruled by the volition of a single man, the man he's going to inha inhabit, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? You, you, you get it? Okay? I, I, I know a lot, a lot of people have a problem with that. I can't help you with that if you do have a problem with that, but it is what it is. Okay? But God is the judge. He put it down one and setteth up another. Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Psalm, wait, where are you going, Brad? <laughs> Psalm 9. All the way towards the beginning of the book of Psalms. Psalm 9, verses 13. On to verse 20. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their, foot, their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. God is a God of judgment. Okay? God is a God of judgment. Okay? God is a God of judgment, people. The Lord is, the, is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands, Higiyan Selah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations, like America, that forget God. For the needy shall not, shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Let not man prevail. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. We do realize we are not God, right? See, see them out there, man? They are gods. They are their own little gods. They've bought into Satan's little... Uh, trickery, his bewitchment, if that's even a word. Ye shall be his gods, knowing good and evil. But God is judge. And Psalm 37, Psalm 37, verses 28 on to verse 34. Psalm 37, verses 28 on to verse 34. For the Lord loveth Judgment. Okay? And forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, 
and his tongue talketh of judgment. You need to judge. You got these weird, twisted Christians. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Always a defensive measure to not have their sins judged. Okay? That's what they that's why they do that. Don't judge me because they know that they're doing something that God is against. Don't judge me. You know, getting drunk. Don't judge me. Okay. I won't, but I'm going to tell you you're lost. <laughs> if someone reverts to the defensive measure of don't judge me. Uh, uh, uh. Ah. Verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. And oh boy, do they ever. And who is righteous? Those who came to the Lord on his terms, washed in his blood, saved, born again, converted. Okay? And yes, the wicked do watch the righteous. Absolutely. That they may slay him. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. You could have no power over me unless it was given you from above. Okay? Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. And go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on, fingers. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 1 under verse 5. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? <laughs> These people say, don't judge. Do ye not know that the saints, those of the church of the living God, shall judge the world, and if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? It's like, Paul's like, dude, come on, what are you doing? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is, is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. <laughs> How do you know what is evil, what is good? You're supposed to judge a uh, righteous judgment according to the scriptures. Okay? God tells you what is good, what is right, and what is evil. You have to judge. Okay? It's, it's just... Eh. For, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Verse 8 and Psalm 75. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. Jeremiah chapter 25. Wine. I like a good glass of wine. And there ain't no problems with drinking a good glass of wine. Just don't get drunk off it, you know? Good red wine, a good Merlot. Oh, yeah. Very good. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 15 under verse 29. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. Verse 4 in Psalm 75. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up the horn. Verse 3. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Pillars of uh, church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, for our instruction in righteousness. Okay. When I shall receive the congregation, verse 2, I will judge uprightly. And of course, the very first verse, where he says, For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. And he sends us out. Kind of like he sends Jeremiah with the cup of the wine, with take the wine cup of this fury at my hand. Verse 16. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad. Mad is insane. 
because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Verse 4, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Verse 5, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Hmm? You see? Okay? To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make a desolation and as to make them a desolation and astonishment and hissing and a curse as it is this day pharaoh king of egypt and his servants and his princes and all his people and all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of the philistines and eshkelon and aza and ekron and the remnant of ashdod pay attention to these pay attention Okay, what is the point that God's wrath that is coming upon this earth, the time of Jacob's trouble, the only ones that are going to escape that wrath are we, the church of the living God. We're going to be redeemed. And then the time of Jacob's trouble is going to ensue, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, until they finally wake up and get it. Okay, but notice, take a note of this. Of all these nations. You're not getting away from God's wrath. You're not getting away from God's judgment. Unless. The way to escape the wrath of God. Is to get saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. To come on him. Come to him on his terms. That's the only way. You're going to escape God's wrath. Edom and Moab. And the children of Ammon. And all the kings of Tyrus. And all the kings of Zidon. And the kings of the isles, which are beyond the sea, Didan and Tima and Booz, and all that are in the uttermost corners, utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth. And the king of Shishak shall drink them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. All these nations, once we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, you that are left behind, you're all going to deal with this doesn't have to be that way but how many of you lost people who make it this far how many of you fools are going to be left behind mm. verse 28 and it shall be if they refuse to to take the cup at thine hand to drink then shalt thou say unto them thus saith the lord of hosts ye shall certainly drink oh i don't believe in that I don't believe in that. Man is getting better. You will refuse it. Doesn't matter. You're going to drink of it anyway. Your only hope is Jesus Christ, God our Father, and His salvation. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name, and shall ye be utterly unpunished? <laughs> ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, Seth, the Lord of hosts, indicative to the time of Jacob's trouble that is coming upon us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Beg your pardon, brethren. Revelation chapter 14, verses 8, and on to verse 12. And there follow now note the two cups the cup of the wine of the wrath of God and there's a different cup and there followed another angel say uh, Revelation 14 verses 8 on to verse 12 and there followed another angel saying Babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication you read about that in Revelation chapter 17. 
wine of the wrath of her fornication, the cup of the Catholic, you know, and the Eucharist, yeah. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, if any man receive the mark of the beast, okay? Then that's what all of this is leading you people up to, okay? And we know this church of the living God, that they are being prepared for the mark of the beast, okay? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Note the two different types of wines, okay? The wine of the wrath of her fornication, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order. Their wine, okay, which is fornication. And then there is the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So if someone takes the mark of the beast, going to be tormented in the presence of the Lamb and of the angels. Hmm. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. See, the only ones who are eternally secure during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Jews that are sealed. Other than that, eternal, uh, eternal, security, um, eternal security is not guaranteed during the time of Jacob's trouble. The only ones who have that are the 144,000 Jews. Okay? See, and what these easy believism devils, these... Uh, these uh, love gospel guys and stuff like that, what they're trying to do is when we, the church of the living God, get caught up, you're going to be left behind with these monsters. And when things start getting really bad, you're going to have these devils say to you, well, you're saved by, it. it's from it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Just believe. You gotta, you're eternally secure. And these guys, and these guys call themselves dispensational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But see, they're going to be left behind. And then you're going to have all these easy believism devils. Go ahead, take the mark. You got, hey, if you don't provide for your own, you're worse than an infidel, right? But what about, don't worry. Once saved, always saved. You're sealed. You just believe. You saved yourself because you believe. And when you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. See, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. What makes a dispensation is the method of being right with God. Okay? That's what makes a dispensation different. And then you got these devils saying that it's faith alone, just believe, from Genesis on to Revelation. They lie into you. And we know that, brethren. We know that. We know that. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Right there, faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. And you've got these hyper-dispensationalists, these easy believism devils, and these love gospel guys and whatnot, and even the uh, Lordship Salvation nuts. Um, <laughs> it's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. We need to remind people of that, brethren. And warn the people of these devils. We have to be like the guys on the Titanic. The Titanic is going down, purposely sunk by the Jesuits, okay? We got to be the ones in the back, shoveling coal, keeping the lights going as long as we can. Okay? That is what we are called to do. That is what we are called to do. Now, verse 9. In Psalm 75. But I will declare forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. Psalm 149. I will declare forever. Psalm 149. Verses 9 and 10 is where the main correction came from the Lord. 
this is where the main corrections came from. This is why I think the, the, the Lord didn't want this video uploaded yesterday. Psalm 149. Remember, the last five uh, psalms in the book of Psalms are all, Praise ye the Lord, Psalm 149. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Of saints, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Talking about the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Remember, we're going to be judging too. <laughs> yeah. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. We already, we already looked at that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul echoes this. Okay? Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Again, what the Lord puts in you, you are to work out. You are to share what the Lord puts into you, brethren, sisters. Okay? You are to share. Luke chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 39. Then they went out to see what was done. This is when the, the, uh, the Lord cast out the devil out of the one guy among the tombs, okay? Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Yeah, the Lord set him free. The Lord set him free. If the Son shall make ye free, ye shall be free indeed. Okay, read Romans chapter 6 sometime. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes, of the Gadarenes round about, besought, uh, then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear, and he went up into a ship and returned back again. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and shew how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Not how great he was because of Jesus, because of what Jesus had done unto him. See, the Lord saves us. We are to share. We are to go return unto thy own house and shew how great things God hath done unto thee. The Lord delivered me from sodomy. He can deliver you too. The Lord delivered me from drugs. He can deliver you too. The Lord has done unto me. The Lord can do unto you. God come on to him according to his terms, though. Not be a thief and a robber and climb up some other way. See, when the Lord genuinely saves us, brethren, you know this. It's You're like bursting. You want to stand on the roof. It's like, I'm saved. I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Right? Right? And that's what we're called to do. Okay? We're called to share, brethren. Not just sit there like misers. We are to share what the Lord has given us. Share it. Okay? It doesn't mean returning to your own vomit. You know? If the Lord calls you out of something, like, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, takes you out of prostitution, you're not going to go be in a prostitute again to preach the gospel? No. I have heard about drunkards who the Lord saves and they go back to the bars and hand out tracts. 
I don't know how good that is because I won't witness to a drunk person only just by behavior or anything because or someone who's stoned. Uh, I never, never really agreed with that. It's like, well, I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's like, eh, going to hand out tracks at a bar where people are getting drunk. Uh, but hey, but see, we're called to share, brethren, you see. That's the point. What the Lord has done in us, we want to share that with the lost out there. And even though at this time they don't want to hear it, do it, do they? Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Verses 32 under verse 34. Acts chapter 13, verses 32 under verse 34. And we declare unto you glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again. And it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he saith on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Verse 32, and we will declare unto you glad tidings, glad tidings, the gospel, the good news, glad tidings, God has saved me, he can save you, okay, Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, again, brethren, don't, don't re neglect to use Romans 3, in the appropriate context. Don't be afraid to speak God's word just because some devils take something way out of context and say just what? One, two, three, four, five. Five verses as the pure gospel, okay? This is scripture, but it's to be used in context appropriately. Romans chapter 3. But I will declare forever. I will sing uh, sing praises to the God of Jacob. See, Romans chapter 3, which these easy believism devils think is the pure gospel, is the declaration of, not the actual gospel. This is the answer. This is the good news. This is the answer to your problems for the lost people. When the Lord uses you to guide someone uh, to himself uh, during, uh, through the Romans road, you know, Romans 1, 2, and Romans 3, uh, and you got to mention about how no one is good, you know, from verses 9 on to verse 18, which they like to avoid, but don't fear, okay? Don't be afraid. Romans chapter 3, verses 21 on to verse 28. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, in other words, in Scripture. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, they have. But see, it has to be personal, remember. And we know this. The devils don't. Okay? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, not yours because you save yourself because of your own belief, you wicked devil heretic. No, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works, nay, but by the law of faith. And here's the one that these easy believism heretics really don't like. Because this explains the context. <laughs> Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law. By grace are you saved through faith. See, 
but I will declare forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. What are you doing? Colossians chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 17. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Colossians chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 17. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all for those who are saved. And this is talking about salvation, being saved in Christ Jesus. In Christ, there is no difference. In flesh, culturally, there's differences. Yes, there is. Okay, this is talking salvifically, okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, because you came to him on his terms, the way of the cross, okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Don't hold grudges. Oh, don't hold grudges. And above all things... Put on charity, which is self-sacrifice, which is the bond of perfectness. Self-sacrifice, as Christ sacrificed himself to save us. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, Lord Jesus, excuse me, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Hey, you got it like this. Romans chapter 10, verses 15, 14 on to verse 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Keep reading. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? For Verse 14 is talking about those um, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. Okay, that's what verse 14 is talking about. Okay. <laughs> and how shall they preach except they be sent? You don't take this honor upon yourself. Okay. And remember, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation and we all have the word of reconciliation. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that, pe that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Psalm 75, but I, verse 9, but I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked, Psalm 75, verse 10, all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Numbers. Yes, and this, this was primarily the main one that needed to be corrected. Numbers chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15. Just two verses. 30 under verse 31. Numbers chapter 15. Verses 30 under verse 31. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. That soul. Notice it doesn't say person. What is a person? It's spirit, soul, and body. Um, because... Under the law, in the Old Testament, that circumcision, God permanently dwelling within you, wasn't there. 
So when it says soul, yeah, that's why there was the dietary things and all that kind of stuff because whatever you touched with, uh, with your body affected your soul. But today in this dispensation, God within you, that seal until the day of redemption, that uh, circumcision made without hands, okay? We've talked about that in length before, okay? Verse 31. Because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment, that soul shall be cut off his iniquity shall be upon him. Psalm 37. See that? Psalm 37. Verses 9 on to verse 15. Ooh. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Verses 9 on to verse, what is it, 15? In Psalm 37. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. We're almost there, brethren. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. We're seeing that in abundance today. <laughs> The Lord shall laugh at him. For he seeth that his day coming is that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. That's what they, they want to make people's faith shipwreck, brethren. Okay? These devils, they want to get people away from the truth and make them shipwreck. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Psalm 101. Hopefully we can finish this psalm before the video is out. Huh? Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. When the Lord makes you a new creature, he's going to do some house cleaning. He's going to say, don't, don't touch that. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't, don't, what are you doing? Don't look at that. that I, I told you not. Okay, fine. There you go. Okay. A new creature. Okay. A forward heart, verse 4, shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. <clears throat> Abstaining from all appearance from evil. Okay? Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Perfect way. Not sinlessly perfect, but perfect as far as heart condition with the Lord, okay? He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2, verses 10 on to verse 22. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. See, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, goes into your heart. That will lead to knowledge. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding, departing from evil, shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man... From the man that speaketh froward things, perverse, disgusting things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil 
and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. Misery loves company. Whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go on to her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. Probably because they never were in the first place. That thou mightest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of righteousness. Of the righteous, excuse me. And keep the paths of the righteous. There is none good but one, that is God. The way of good men. Look at that verse. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of righteousness. How do you learn how to walk in the way of good men? Do, do we need to go get into that? For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the horns of the righteous, uh, all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Revelation chapter 22. Very neat and very appropriate. Revelation chapter 22. Verses 12 on to the close of the scriptures. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He is our reward. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall I add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Brethren, we're almost there. We're almost home. How much longer we have to go, I don't know. Nobody knows. But we're almost there. We're getting closer every single day. Things are happening. We're, we're almost there. And we as the Church of the Living God, we got to stay vigilant. We got to be sober. We got we to gotta keep going on. We have to uh, do as the Lord will have us. We have to go where He will guide us. Okay? We have to abide in Him. Because without Him, what are we going to do? And there are those of you out there there are those of you who have been given gifts. We, we, we've all been given gifts of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, upon him saving us. He's given gifts unto us. These gifts are meant to be shared. 
with the church of the living God. And if the Lord has saved you, don't you want to shout upon the rooftops, right? Because brethren, the times that are coming, it's, it's, it's the snowball effect. It can't be stopped. It's getting worse daily. And hence, we need to be dependent on our Lord daily. See, not self-sufficient. Christ-dependent. See, when you start getting self-sufficient, then you get lax. Then you're kind of like Jeshurun. We need to be Christ-dependent. Let us be Christ-dependent. Well, that's going to be it for this video. This video is actually the conclusion of the previous two videos. Hopefully you'll see they, the, the, the past two videos and this one, they all kind of tie in together. They all kind of tie in together. And that was the Lord's plan. And like I said, the, the previous video, I know why the Lord didn't allow it to happen. Because there were some things in there that just didn't fit. I get it. I praise the Lord for it. But um, hopefully, brethren, this uh, video will help some of you, encourage some of you, and maybe light a fire underneath some of your buttocks to, to start sharing that gift that the Lord has given you with the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God. And thank you unto all of you who pray for us. We love all of you. Thank you so much for your prayers. We need them. Please continue to pray for us. Thank you for those who are helping us. And also thank you unto those who have helped us. No matter who you are, no matter who you are, whether you did it in a false pretense or not, thank you. Thank you. Now, hopefully this will get uploaded. Hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully. Thank you, brethren. We love you. Please keep us in your prayers as we pray for many of you. And we will see you in the next video, Lord willing.